We're going to now go back to chapter three, which is about counting. So we get to have a break from proving things and we're just going to count things instead. But in fact, we're actually going to prove a lot of these things about these counting principles. So right, it's going to be sort of weird. We're going to just talk about how to count things, which seems pretty basic, but it can actually be pretty complicated. And in order to count things, we're going to use multiplication and addition and subtraction. In particular, we're going to use the multiplication principle, which is a way that we can count different lists, and then the addition and subtraction principles as well. So first, we're going to focus on the multiplication principle, which is in 3.2 of the book. Okay, so before we can get to this multiplication principle from 3.2, we're going to need one definition from 3.1. So 3.1 is just introducing this idea of a list. So a list is an ordered collection of elements where repeats are allowed. So unlike a set, it's going to be ordered. So if you have the list 1, 2, that's going to be different than the list 2, 1. And we are allowed to have repeats. So instead of using braces here, I'm going to just use parentheses. So it's kind of like an ordered pair but it could have more things. And I'm also allowed to have repeats, and that's going to be a different list. So these are all different lists from each other, even though if they were sets, they would be the same. So let me make sure I have a naughty list there. Okay, so what I want to do with these lists is count them. So we're going to jump right into section 3.2 and think about how we can count the number of lists that satisfy certain properties. So I want to know how many lists are there where the list has three elements. The first element is either A, B, or C. The sex, second element is either 5 or 6. And the third element is either A or X. So it'll be really random here. So what I'm going to do to think about this is I'm going to draw a tree diagram. So starting off, I know that my first element is either an A or a B or a C. And then from there, that next element is either a 5 or a 6. And no matter what the first element was, I'm always going to get both the 5 and the 6. And then the last element is either an A or an X. And then the order matters here, so I can't mix them all around. Let me put in all my A's and X's. A, X. And then from there, I can just kind of read across my branches, A, 5, A, to build all of my different sets, A, 5, X, and so forth. So let me go ahead and just fill these in. Okay, so what we want to ask ourselves is right, how many different lists did I actually get? So I say because of the A, B, C, I sort of got my three branches. Each of those three branched off into two more. So then I had a total of six branches. Each of those six branched off into another two. So overall, I have three times two times two, which is going to be six times two, which is 12 different lists. So we can start to see where this multiple prin multiplication principle comes in. If I'm trying to count options, then for every time I have a new option, then I'm going to get a new multiplier, and that multiplier is going to sort of multiply the number of options that we could possibly have. Okay, so this is sort of a related question. And again, we want to think about how many lists we can have. Now we have length four, and we have the options are the letters A, B, C, and D, and there's no repeats. So again, the first letter can be A, or B, or C, or D. So let me give myself some space here. So that's my first option. So there's three options. But now, depending on what I chose, because there's no repeats, I'm going to have different options next. So if I chose A, then I'm going to have B, or C, or D. If I chose B, then I'll have A, or C, or D. If I chose C, I have A, B or D. And if I chose D, then I'll have A or B or C. Right? So the important thing to notice here is that even though I have different options for each of these, 
I'm always still going to have three options. So even though the options themselves are different, the number of options is the same. So let's go ahead and finish drawing out this tree. I'm actually just gonna pull in the nice typed version from the book here so we don't have to write it all out. So I'll pop that in. Cover up our ugly one. So we see, right, we have these choices originally, these four different choices. That was our first choice we had to make. And then after that, I had these three options. And there was always three options, even if those options were different. After that, because I have no repeats, so there's only two options left. And finally, then there was only one option. So overall, I had four times three times two times one, which is 24 options. So this leads us to this multiplication principle. So that's going to say that if I want to try to find the total number of options available, I just need to multiply the noun of options in each of our things. So let's see that in the next slide. So what this multiplication principle says, again, is that if I'm trying to make a list of length n, of length n, and there are a sub 1 possible choices for the first entry, a sub 2 for that second entry, a sub 3 for that next third entry, and so forth, then the total number of options altogether is just going to be the product of those. So I just multiply the number of options for each of the entries, and that's going to give me the total number of options for that list. So here's a question for you guys to think about based on this discussion, or based on this multiplication principle. Um, in Connecticut, license plates are usually have two letters followed by five digits. So I want you to think about how many possible license plates there are, and we'll talk about that in class. So finally here, let's add a couple of extra restrictions to our lists and see if we can get some more complicated things to think about. So I want to know how many lists there are if I have lists of length four with the options are A, B, C, D, and E, and F. And I want there to be repetition, it not allowed, and it definitely has an E in it. So let's think about this. I have lists of length four. One, two, three, four. I can't have repetition. So for the first spot, there's going to be six options. Then I'm going to have five options and so forth. But if I just do this out, then I'm not going to be guaranteed to have an E. So we need to do something a little special here to make sure we have an E. So there's a couple different ways we can think about this. Because I know that repetition is not allowed, once I know where the E is, then I know that there can't be another E floating around. So I can ask myself, where is the E? So let's get this out of the way. We'll ask ourselves, where is the E? I know it exists somewhere. There's only four spots. So it's either in the first spot, the second spot, the third spot, or the fourth spot. So once I choose where that E is, then I can figure out where everything else is. So I put in my E, and now I think about where the other things could be. Now that the E is gone, there's one, two, three, four, five options for what's next, and then four options, and then three. So all together, there's 20 times 3, 60 options. And over here, it's the same, 5, 4, and 3. So that's another 60. 5, 4, and 3 is another 60. 5, 4, and 3. So overall, there's 5. Oops, that was not a 5 times four times three options, but they got that four different times. So that's that 60 times four. 
So what are some other ways that we can think about this? Let's move this next question down. Oops. We'll save this one for next time. Next slide, maybe. How else could I have thought about this question? I could have said, okay, first, choose where the E is, right? And there was four options for that. Then place the other letters. And there was five times four times three options for that. So we add all of those, sorry, multiply all of those together. We get that 60 times four, which is 240 options. So that's another way we can think about that. It's sort of a multiplication principle within the principle. So the first option was to choose where the E was, and then the next options were to choose all of the letters for the other spots. And that is sort of allowed in this type of thinking, in this type of combinatorial thinking. So the branch of mathematics that's relating to these counting arguments is called combinatorics. Write that down if you want to learn more about it. And it's really neat, and I really like it a lot. Combinatorics. All right, so now let's answer this question. What can we do if repetition is allowed? Let's go for the next slide for that. Okay, so the question that we wanna look at is again, same list of length four. I'm allowed to use the letters A through F. I wanna make sure I have an E for sure, but repetition is allowed. So we could try to go back through the same type of argument we did before. So we can ask ourselves, where is the E? And I could say, oh, it's either in the first spot or it's in the second spot or so forth. So I can have my E here or I can have my E be here. And then we could start filling in the rest of the letters. But now since repetition is allowed, right, there's still going to be six options because it could still be anything. And then another six options and so forth, and six options. And over here, we'll have the same thing. But the problem that we run into is let's consider this list E, E, say C, F. This list would be counted over here because it has an E in that first spot. And it would be counted over here because it also has an E in the second count spot. So this is actually double counted because I ended up counting it both times. Now, if instead of saying that this was six each time, I said it was five, then that wouldn't be counted at all. So that also wouldn't work. So this is sort of the trouble that we can run into. It's we try to split up these lists we really need to make sure each of our conditions don't have anything in common. And that's what we'll talk about more in the next section with this, multiple, or with this addition and subtraction principles. But for right now, let's see if we can come up with a different way to count these. All right, so this isn't going to really work for us. So here I notice that E is required. So I know that I only want to count the ones that definitely have E's. But sometimes when we're doing this, it's easy to sort of think about the, the complement to this set. So what if I said I wanted to find the ones without E's? Because if I think about my sort of overall lists, there's the ones with E's, and then there's the one without E's, and then together that's all of the lists. Right, so all of my lists either have E's or no E's. So if I find all lists with repetition allowed, and then I subtract off the lists without E's, so let's find the number of all lists with repetition, the number of all lists without E's, I should get the number of lists with repetition with so let's see if that's an easier quantity to count. So the number of all lists with repetition, I'm going to have, I'm just going to write number of options in these spots. So six options, six options, six options, six options. 
So I get 6 to the 4th. Now the number of lists without E's, if I can't have E's, then I have to have 5 options, 5 options, 5 options, 5 options. So I get 5 to the 4th. And so if I subtract those, 6 to the 4th minus 5 to the 4th, which is 671, that's going to be the number of lists that has repetition, but definitely has E's in it. So when we're doing these sort of multiplication principles, we can definitely come up with sort of these more complicated questions, and you'll see some of those in the homework this week. We'll end this video with a final discussion question. So a passcode has letters A, B, C, all the way up to Z. So just 26 options. I forget how many letters there are. And I know that no two consecutive letters are the same. So I can't have A, A something, but I could have like A, B, and then another A after that. And I want to know how many options there are. If, let's add in a total number. So if there are, let's say, seven letters total in that passcode. So again, we'll talk about that in class.